thing we're going to do today is we're going to discover the formula for a cylinder. Write down what you think you're doing to find the volume. We want volume of a cylinder. In this segment, Kimberly Snowball, an 8th grade math teacher at Campbell County Middle School in Alexandria, Kentucky, presents a lesson about formulas for the volume of cones, cylinders, and spheres. R squared times high, right? Kimberly's lesson is aligned with 8th grade Common Core Math Standard Geometry 9, as well as standards for Mathematical Practice 2 and 8. On Friday, we talked about surface area. We needed to know surface area because we needed to be able to find the base area to be able to calculate volume. Today, our learning target, as we see up there, is our SWABAT students will be able to informally prove, informally prove the relationship between a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere. So, first I want you to draw those three images, a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere, and label them on your whiteboards. Our standard that we're going to be integrating into the lesson today was what we consider AG9, where they have to informally prove the formulas for a sphere, a cone, and cylinder. The goal is that by the end of class, they'll be able to make the relationships between, if they know the formula for a cylinder, that they will then be able to judge or come up with another for, the other two formulas for a, a sphere and the cone. Okay, once you've actually drawn the cylinder, the sphere, and the cone, hold them up. You labeling. Okay. Get some labels on yours. What I, don't erase them yet. What I want you to do is I want you to actually locate the base. Find the base of each one of those. That's an important piece to volume today. Oh, that is a great question. She said, what if they don't have a base? Hmm. Okay, hold them up. Let's see what we, what, what we have so far. Tell me, uh, what, what did you come up with, uh, Mr. Weiner, with the sphere? Um, I drew where the radius would be. So the radius is important? Okay, good. What shape is the base of each one of these 3D objects? Mason? A circle. A circle. So what formula would we use? What formula do we need to start with? Think, think, think. What, what dimension do we need? <laughs> so much for the memory. Uh, C equals 2 pi. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, 2 times pi times radius. 2 times. That's the circumference. That's, are you looking at circumference formula? I have no idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all right. All right, so it's pi area. times radius squared. Pi times radius squared, okay. Students build on their knowledge of quadrilaterals to understand the area formula for circles. Now, the area of the base actually consists of, you know, just, you know, the, the bottom part. But that's a 2D object. We're going to 3D now. So what, what other dimension do we have to have now? I want to know. Volume, that's what volume is. That's what the three-dimensional, you know, formula talks about, is that, that we need that height in there, correct? So we need the height. And the other name for height is layer. We want to be able to actually find how many layers there are. And the same After thing. Kimberly helps students understand the reasoning behind these new formulas, students write down their predictions for the volume of a cylinder. What do we've got? Let me see your formula. Question mark. We're still lost. So close. They're so used to volume always being length times width times height, and then all of a sudden you throw a sphere in, and there's not a length and not a width and not a height. So constantly using you know, the prediction to see where they are, having them go with the discovery of the cylinder formula and build again on the other two formulas from that. So all we really need to do is actually find the circle, the area of the circle, and times by the height. Now that students know the correct formula for cylinders, Kimberly invites them to write in on their exit slips, which she has distributed early. She then asks students to predict the formulas for a sphere and cone in relationship to a cylinder. The reason why we spend so much time on this cylinder formula, because that's the most important one. If we can remember that one, if we can actually just, you know, keep pushing ourselves to remember that one, we actually will not have to memorize formulas, we'll just know them. Ms. Snowball integrates Mathematical Practice Standard 2 as students compare their formula-based predictions with an actual physical measurement of the volume of a cylinder. First thing, can you pour water really good? Okay, one thing I want to check is before you fill it up with water, 
is that the cylinder and the top have the same circumference. Good. Okay. If this all this relationship only works if the base areas are exactly the same. You have your predictions, right? Anybody want to share? Ma Mason wants to share, and then we'll get you next. I did circumference times height. Circumference times height. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes? For Ken, I did half big B times H. Half big B times H. Okay, so you're thinking, so are you thinking three of these will fill, fill this up? Yep. You're thinking half, two of these will fill this up? Because you're thinking half of this, right? Okay, oh. go ahead, Phil. The only thing that uh, we're really concerned about today is uh, that um, we're dealing with water with middle school kids. And so whenever we introduce water in the classroom, you know, we don't want, uh, we don't want uh, messes that, you know, that are overwhelming. Up, oh, level, 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 keep going. These group of uh, students are such great groups, of, you know, great students that I really don't have too many concerns. I think that they're going to um, shine. I really do. That dump. Is, that's super cool. Dump, dump. Um, Hold it up for everyone. Yeah. Wait a minute. How much is in there? I think one That's one a third. third. <laughs> you think it's one third? I got that. Ah, cool. Yeah. High five, a green sheet, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this is, in fact, what do we think? Are you positive? Fill again. Still again. Ooh, where are we at now? Two thirds. Two -thirds. Teamwork, Jay. Teamwork, right? Oh, very good. So how many? Three. So how do we write that? Pi. Pi. Times radius squared. Good. Times height. Times height. And then what do we do? I think that the group of students that you know we're starting to see um, coming up are understanding that it's not just, you know, a right or wrong answer, it's being able to thoroughly explain it. So times by a third would be the same as dividing by? Three. Three. Good job. Uh, so we could actually do pi r squared times height and then divide by three. Either one of those formulas would work because we've just proven informally, and that's our learning target, well, at least one third of our learning target. We're actually at two thirds now. <laughs> okay, what do we believe now about the relationship, how many cones, how many cones will fill up this? In order to find the volume of a sphere, the class repeats the same process they use for discovering the formula for the volume of a cone. They write their predictions, then determine how many cones of water will fill up the sphere. However, some students confuse the answer they discovered in class with the one on their green formula sheet. Yes, you have a question? Why would you give us a false sheet? Oh, you think the sheet's wrong. Mm. Obviously it's wrong. The sheet says four thirds. In clarifying this misconception, Kimberly incorporates mathematical practice standard eight to help students apply different methods and shortcuts in arriving at the volume formula for a sphere. Radius squared times height is the same as radius cubed. Could that be? They combine their like terms, something that we've been doing for months now. Kelsey, you looked a little confused. Was it just eye itching or was that thinking? That was both. A little both, okay. What, what? <laughs> I can't take care of the eye itching, but what about the confusion? How, I don't understand how height still equals radius. Two radius. Yeah, how does it equal the diameter? Ah. Oh. Wait, wait, I see, That's I see. Do you see the picture? The picture? Okay, so now on the back of that piece of paper there, it's kind of like a little X slipping away. I want you, if I erase the entire board, I want you to write on your index card all three formulas. Cone, sphere, and cylinder. Which one did you do? Okay, guys, we will check these tomorrow, so get, just get those five problems, or those four problems. Oh, I think it went well today. The students um, gave quite a, uh, a lot of information about what they were thinking. I also put one half base times height because um, I was thinking about the areas of two-dimensional shapes. They were very involved in the lesson. The, there was no water accidents, you know, minimal spill, and uh, pretty steady hands as far as, uh, as far as the experiment went. And uh, when I looked at their exoslips, you know, small little tweaks, but I think we've mastered our learning target.
It was exciting to see the students when all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Those, those are those magical moments that, um, that they tend to share out with other kids because they're, they're just, it's a comfortable environment and you have to set that environment up first. And where we'll go, go next is uh, we're going to look at tomorrow just a little bit. We're going to flash through uh, the relationship and so showing them the relationship between uh, square-based pyramids and the uh, relationship between its, um, its cube with the same base. And then they're going to start moving into the, more formulas on volume you know, and practicing them. And our goal is eventually for them to use it in real-world situations so they can apply it.